Welcome back. Dealmakers are facing competing sets of challenges right now. The economic slowdown bringing down company valuations, but higher rates making capital more expensive. So what gets bought and who does the buying? Joining us now for more is Bain Capital co-managing partner John Connaughton. John, great to have you here. So what about it? Um, as you balance those things, how, how is it going to work out? Well, there's the short term and then the intermediate term. I think that uh, we've been here before. You know, I think we've gone through cycles where we've come out of a credit cycle, a valuation cycle, an economic expansion cycle. Um, that was the case in 2001 and 2009. Uh, and now it's the case in, in 2023 where there really are no deals because the context is pretty complicated. Uh, and the uncertainty around the credit markets is not helping. And the prospect of the recession that you all have been talking about, I think, is a, is a clarity uh, for most investors that you need to withstand a big recession. Um, so buyers and sellers are not seeing it the same way. You know, I think there's a lot of uh, memories and nostalgia for 21 peak valuations, which, you know, they don't wear off very quickly. Um, and so I think it's pretty difficult for buyers and sellers to get together. That's the bad news for the short term. Uh, but in all those cycles in the past, it was the second or third year where the volume really took off. You know, it's where the credit market stabilized, where the recession, you know, was behind us. Uh, and I think in those markets, I think that's where you're going to see, you know, the, the deal business really grow in volume again. And where do the regional banks fit into that? We're about to get earnings from them. I know you talk to a lot of bank executives. Uh, are they going to have to go through a period of pushing away from the table when it comes to lending? to get these balance sheets shored up, and, and then how much of an impact are, are you modeling that that's going to have on the economy? You know, it's just, there's so many straws in this camel's back. Uh, you know, that was just the, the last one. Um, you know, I think the banks themselves, the big banks, were not lending. I think they had a difficult time going out on duration with committing huge capital to take privates or, or LBOs in general. Uh, the syndicated market was not working. Uh, the direct lenders were pulling back because they also saw some challenges with their flows. So, you know, the regional banks is just another another straw on that back. And, and so I think they are pulling back, especially for small businesses. Uh, we have a big venture portfolio. It's obviously going to impact uh, their liquidity relative to uh, the lending practices of, of a Silicon Valley bank. Um, so I think it's just another way that uh, I think markets and businesses will will suffer in, I think, what is the coming recession. I don't think there's a day that goes by <clears throat> that we don't have people on our air saying, or somebody on our air arguing that this time is different. When you talk about 01, you talk about 09 and some of the previous cycles we've seen, is it different? Well, I think there's, there's two things going on there. One is we are in a cyclical business and credit cycles and valuation cycles and economic expansion and contraction are all parts of what is the same. I think what is different uh, at least from our, our perspective, is that our industry has grown up a lot. Um, and so the nature of having 40 years of lower rates, lots of liquidity, expanding multiples, I think that will be different. I don't think we're seeing the kind of robust GFC expansion where the Fed had a put that helped out everybody. Multiples went up a ton. Uh, I do think they'll recover. Credit markets will recover. Multiples will go up, I think but not to the degree that we saw over the last 40 years, over the last 12 years. There's going to be a reset in this new paradigm. In terms of the mismatch between buyers and sellers, where are the biggest mismatches? And I guess on the flip side, where have those mismatches already adjusted where you're seeing opportunity? Well, I'd love to be, uh, believe that the public to private market will be a robust, um, you know, maybe not near term, but in the intermediate term, like as we get through a little bit more of this, this credit, uh, stabilization because there is value in the public markets. Um, it's the challenge of of getting a, a duration of a committed capital structure to go out, you know, six to 12 months uh, where we can't find that level of capital from the traditional debt providers. Uh, but the values are there. Uh, I think boards are beginning to realize that these values are not going back to 21 levels. And I think that will be a really interesting time for, for private equity to enter. We're seeing with pipes now, we're seeing it with some trades in, in public securities for even private investors, because uh, it's much better than the private markets. Um, but I think it will take the credit to stabilize to really get the big LBO market working again. I think you've said that you'd rather see uh, higher rates and lower valuations on the targets you want to buy than the other way around, which is interesting. And your strategy, I guess, is to, is to buy leaders and then consolidate. So at what point do you expect that to really start ripping, right? For, for you to, have you made that first 
motion yet? Do you have enough of the leaders that you want and it's just a matter of consolidation? Or are you going to start hunting for the leaders in the back half of this year, beginning of 24? Well, let's not forget that we have 175 companies in our portfolio. Right. And I think the way we capitalized them uh, was to both fix the rates, by the way, which was a, a blessing uh, that we now learn, uh, but also capitalize them in a, in a way that we can go after uh, acquisitions. And so we have been doing a lot of, of acquisition activity within our, our platform companies. Uh, and so that activity has not slowed down at all. In fact, to your point, the valuations for that entry are much better than we would have seen in the last three or four years. Uh, so that activity is, is certainly there. In terms of pl new platform companies, I think uh, we've seen some activity where we'll partner with another sponsor who's trying to get some liquidity, but they need a new partner with fresh capital. Uh, and we can be that capital provider and, 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 and try to help that business consolidate with new, new money at the table. What's your approach to AI? Well, it's, look, technology and automation and, and machine learning, all these things that are kind of only in their infancy, uh, we're seeing them already have an impact in the early stages before we got to, you know, to, to some, of the, some of the chat GPT applications. There's a lot going on in healthcare with respect to much more robust uh, ability to to do decision making support. I mean, one of our uh, latest investments that we made is a value based healthcare company called Athena Health, mm. uh, which is all about trying to understand the clinical protocols relative to population health, and trying to use data effectively to be better decision makers as clinicians. That's just the tip of the iceberg for things that can happen in healthcare, as an example. We saw Biden end the COVID national emergency this week, and. By the way, with no fanfare whatsoever. But I, I am curious, coming out of this post-pandemic or coming into this post-pandemic era now, what it means in terms of investing in healthcare and if it's changed your strategy in any way. You know, I think it's it's accelerated a lot of the trends that I think uh, were underway, but but really had not crystallized. Um, you know, labor productivity inside clinical organizations was very archaic, and the ability to utilize. Mm. Uh, tools to to operate hospitals more efficiently more efficiently to get them through uh, emergency rooms and through the surgical operating rooms we own a business that really automates the the productivity measures to get get that to be much better outcomes but also faster that would never have happened until the hospital saw all the all the, the crowding that they saw inside the hospitals during covid telehealth everybody talks about and the ability to do diagnostics uh, and really do some delivery of healthcare in in, in uh, digital form. I think that's accelerated through this process. So all these technology trends. I've been doing healthcare for 35 years. They've been talking about it for 35 years, but it's not until recently that really it's being adopted. All right. Challenge brings opportunity. John Connaughton, uh, global head of Bain Capital Private Equity and co-managing partner. Great having you here. Thanks. Pleasure.